Oh, hey, how's it going? Uh, just reading a book. That's right. Got a new car. And it's uh, exciting. And um, this reminds me of uh, my first foray into uh, the world of uh, war gaming because uh, there's a lot of stuff in here as I'm flipping through and looking at sections that I got no fucking idea what the hell they're talking about. Um, yeah, but it's very exciting. We were at one vehicle for a while and uh, we, we, we need two cars for our jobs. We just need two cars. I've wanted a, a hybrid for quite a long time. And um, now we've just got to continually work and make sure that we're working because uh, we got two new vehicles. My car has been dead for quite a while and I've been without one. So we've been sharing one vehicle. That vehicle needs a lot of work um, and the amount of money to put into that old vehicle. We may as well just get new ones. So we, we bit the bullet. We've been looking for a little while now and then we just kind of sealed the deal on Friday. Um, and I've been driving this Corolla hybrid around and it's been incredible. Um, I'm sold. It's uh, It just makes sense. It's made sense for a long time. Um, unfortunately, full electric is just not a reality yet. Um, financially, for very many people, I imagine, there's just not a lot of options out there. Hopefully that changes. Um, welcome. How are you? So just a, a little short video. I, I, I sort of did a video about some of this last night, but I felt like I was all over the place. It was really, really late or really, really early, depending on when you were tuning in. Um, I was listening, I've been listening to a bunch of music lately as I've been reading and, um, I just wanted to highlight uh, a few albums. Um, the first one I wanted to briefly talk about was, hopefully that gets there. Yeah. Uh, by a band called Harvey Milk and, um, come on, I've just blanked on the name of the album. A Small Turn of Human Kindness, and it came out in uh, 2011. So it's kind of like, you know, doom, sludge, heavy, heavy stuff. Um, the, they're a fantastic band. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that they've done that I really, really enjoy. Um, when I first heard this album many, many years ago, um, I remember it just not sticking with me. Uh, enjoying it enough, but it didn't really do much for me. I kind of rediscovered it in the past few months here and uh, spent one night where I was listening to it on the stereo and uh, just kind of following along. There's a there's a few sites you can go to to get lyrics. Um, so I was following along with the lyrics, and by the time I hit uh, the last song, I was uh, an absolute wreck. Um, just kind of those are the songs on it. I just want to go home. I'm sick of all this too. I know this is no place for you, which is one of my favorite pieces on the album. I alone got up and left. I know this is all my fault. I did not call out. Um, the One of the things that takes a bit of time to grow on you with Harvey Milk is uh, Preston's uh, vocals. They're really kind of like, I don't know, they're just this kind of howling cry. You know, it's, it's not always, there's a little bit of warble. There's, he's not directly on pitch but there's just this real raw emotional element to it and especially on this album which i don't want to talk about in too much detail I'd, I'd love for you to listen to it and just kind of hear the story unfold um it just ends on such a, a sad note and you can really feel it with the very the precision of the music um and then his kind of just wailing on top of it throughout these songs as he's kind of addressing things like you know he doesn't feel like he's a good enough human being, let alone a man, you know, etc. cetera. Um, and that's some of the themes that sometimes run through their, their music, this kind of uh, masculinity and, and how to deal with that as a human being and how to deal with that as a man and all of this. And, and the fact that you may, you know, you may let people down and you're going to make mistakes and how that translates. Um, an exceptionally good album by one hell of a band They're They're, Still number one for me is an album called Special Wishes, uh, which I find from front to back, uh, every single song stellar. This is a very, very, very close second for me out of their discography. Um, and the other one that's been boggling my mind, it's been 
I've been enjoying it so much that last night as I was reading, I had a bunch of albums queued up on my MP3 player here on the computer, Winamp. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, and this album came on and I, I stopped reading uh, so I could listen to the album again. And it's the new album by the band called Clipping. Um, that's not really showing up, but it's a, it's a bunch of teeth is that album. So I don't know much about this band myself. Uh, my son is the one who turned me on to these guys. Um, the, the singer, David, I think is how you pronounce his name. He played Hamilton in the TV uh, movie, I guess, that they did of that play. And um, it's, it's hip hop, but the thing that's fascinating about it and the thing that really works for me on this album, I haven't heard all of their albums yet. I'm still brand new to this, to this band. Um, is the the strange like noise and experimental music um, influences that are heavy throughout the album. There's full on noise passages. There's full on electroacoustic. Uh, you know, a guitarist and a drummer falling down a flight of stairs type of sounds. There's some very precise kind of field recordings for on on some of their older albums, but even on this one, there's these very crisp recordings. Uh, Anthony Fantano, who does uh, Needle Drop, <coughs> had an interview with them that's well worth checking out, uh, just because it gives a little bit of an insight on their kind of sound design background and um, soundtrack producing and, and, you know, their love of video game design, like when it comes to ambience and, and um, I guess the more Foley elements. <coughs> so as I was looking, reading about this on Discogs, I also see, sorry. <clears throat> I believe it was mastered. Let me just look here. Uh, yeah, mastered by a guy named Rashad Becker, um, who I know very well. Um, He's got a, he's a mixing, mastering, and recording engineer at his own studio, Clunk, in Berlin, Germany. Um, he, he did a lot of work with, like, techno and that type of electronic music, um, musicians and acts, I guess. Uh, but he put out two phenomenal albums, uh, Traditional Music of Notional Species, Volume 1, and then in 2016. So the first one was 2013. Volume 2 came out in 2016, and I cannot recommend these two albums highly enough. Um, the thing that I love about some of this more electroacoustic and sound design and, and synthesis and that blending of all of these worlds, when you get someone who's really deft at uh, creating these, these sounds and really knows how to manipulate these sounds <coughs> into something that you just never really heard before but the thing with the Rashad Becker albums is that he creates this world where it almost feels like you're on a National Geographic exploration of some sort of wilderness or some sort of uh, uh, environment and all the species are every single track has sort of the same species just doing a different uh, you're seeing them do something different you know um, they're, they're phenomenal albums, and I've gone back to them. I, I have them on vinyl. Uh, there's kind of the cover there. I have them on vinyl, but uh, when I bought them, you also got the digital downloads for them. And um, honestly, it's an album like I love the vinyl crackle, absolutely. But for this stuff, uh, digital is the way to go because you, I think you really need that crispness and that pureness. So you're listening to only what it is he wanted to present to you. So I would, I would highly recommend Rashad Becker, especially if you're a fan of the, the clipping album. Um, and then just the last point on the clipping album itself is that it just surprises the shit out of me that, uh, it's as popular as it is. Because like I said, there's some really out there sound design elements on there. And there's really some strange things happening on that album that I'm just genuinely surprised uh, have the attention of so many people. I'm really glad that it does. And I'm, it makes me 
excited to hear that that kind of thing is getting embraced by a larger audience. Um, but it, it surprises me nonetheless. Uh, but I'm thankful for it. And honestly, it's an album that I'm going to be listening to again tonight. It's, it's just, it's something, man. Uh, I'm still at the stages where I'm just so kind of enthralled with everything that's going on. I haven't dug deep into the lyrics. Lyrics are classically not my thing, but with, you know, obviously there's going to be some times where you need to kind of take the time. And this feels like one of those albums that I will just have to take the time and maybe find some lyrics online and follow along. Um, so then the other thing that I thought went really well with that. Uh, so one of the compilations, I think I might've talked about it here. I know that I did uh, one, a dead air episode on my weekly radio station where I played a bunch from this compilation. Uh, this right here, um, the CDs upstairs, I didn't bring stuff down. So I just have stuff on the phone to show you. Uh, the Japanese American noise treaty is hands down the first um, full on noise compilation that, uh, that I got into uh, back in, I don't know, 93, 90, 95, possibly. Maybe it was 95 when it came out um, and exposed me to a lot of artists and just an entire genre of kind of music, I guess, loose quotes that I just didn't know existed. Um, so I had revisited that compilation, I don't know, about a month or so ago, uh, listened to both discs. So one disc is purely Japanese artists and one disc is purely uh, American artists. Um, and it's nice to see that how they kind of how they kind of work together and how each, you know, group of people uh, are taking things in a little bit different directions. Um, and there was a lot of acts on it or a lot of artists on it that um, previously I hadn't, they hadn't caught my attention. I haven't listened to it for a long time. So it was really great to hear it again. Um, sorry, let me just pull this up here. And one of the groups, so just kind of like a, if it will come into focus, there's a look at some of the artists on this sucker uh, on the Japanese side. Um, you'll see Contagious Orgasm is one of the ones that's highlighted there. Um, a solo act from, I think, started in like 1987. Um and done a lot of different things so kind of delved into noise but then also did some experimental and did some like techno and did some ambient and that sort of thing there was two albums that i have by contagious orgasm um and they are called uh the cause of the flow and then what the heck was the other one called? Oh boy. I can't remember what the other one is called. Sorry, I'm going to need to, this will just bug me. And then I promise we'll get into comics just once I'm done this thought. Um, so the cause of the flow from 2002 and then flows out from 2003 and out of those two i would say the cause of the flow is the one that i would recommend um, not pure noise but i think it i think it matches really well with the uh clipping album as well um it's it's not that it's a, a very similar aesthetic it's just that the kind of sound design and the kind of things that are occurring within one of the pieces really reminded me a little more of that kind of uh, clipping world. Um, so I would I would really recommend that one, The Cause of the Flow. From 2002 on a label called Antizen, pardon me, Antizen, and uh, Contagious Orgasm is the name of the, the artist there on that one. So uh, those are a couple of things that I'm listening to. A lot of times when I'm reading comics or anything, I'm, I'm playing something in the background and I find this type of stuff works really well for me. I've spoken before about the tape deck that's behind me there um, and some of the stuff that I listen to on cassette uh, that's not really uh, too uh, obtrusive, but sort of adds an element to the reading. 
Um, sometimes it matches up incredibly well and sometimes it just is in the background and I'm more focused on the book and it doesn't really add anything to the experience, but it's nice to sometimes listen to stuff more abstract. Um, so that's my music recommendations for this week. Um, I went to complete, I'd done a trade with Greg before. I still had some credit. I placed another order, plus I had some stuff to trade. So I, I got to uh, go and visit him today and I got a, a quick peek. We didn't spend much time, but I got a quick peek in the basement um, in his kind of lair where he kind of deals with all his comics and stuff and has his collections that he's kind of looking through to grade and then start to sell. Um, and I was very excited to see one of the rolling carts and I could see like NBM. I could see, you know, it looked like some Catalan stuff. It looked like some European uh, comic albums. Um, so he says, yeah, I haven't gone through those yet, but eventually those will those will be coming and there'll be another list. And I started drooling uh, and I'm like, yeah, you know me, I'm, I'm good for anything European. Um, and again, Earl Grey did that phenomenal video the other day that I would highly recommend, or yesterday rather, uh, going to check that out. But I picked up four books from him to kind of, as we're going through our trade, uh, one of the ones that was on his list already that somehow passed me by, but I had another look just to kind of double check if there was any Eclipse titles that I missed. And I, I missed uh, I missed this one on his list before, uh, Straight Up to See the Sky. An illustrated guidebook to the great trans Allegheny adventures and chiefs adventurers and chiefs by Tim Truman. So this is um, just a little bit of history with some illustration by Truman. Simon Gertie is a, a book that he ended up doing. Um, so you get, you know, three or four pages of text with a very, very brief overview. Um, some of them go into a little more detail than others. Um, and the, the entire book is, is just that a little bit of history, uh, tells the story of America when the frontier was the area just beyond the, just beyond the Ohio river covering the period from the 1740s through the 1790s. These concise yet detailed biographies, each illustrated with a full page portrait provide a fresh updated look at the woodsmen, warriors, captives, settlers, and explorers of the Eastern American frontier. Um, so there you go. Another, uh, another eclipse title for the ages. Um, happy to grab uh, the first volume of the Modesty Blaze uh, collection was this tight. Yeah. Titan books on this one. So this is book one that Gabriel set up. Uh, I've got one of the other books. I think it's one of the much later ones. I want to say like 12 or 10 or something like that. So just a collection of the, the strips. Uh, and I, I really enjoyed the other one. Um, you know, it's, it was one of those that I read kind of piecemeal over quite a long period of time, you know, read a bunch of pages, put it down, came back to it a few days later. Uh, so I'm looking forward to digging into this a little bit more. So it'll be great. Um, and then uh, save that one till last. I just saw Gore Vidal in a, a live stream from Chaos and Comics. And I, I mentioned that I got my hands on another Creepax. Uh, it's Creepax and Stevenson, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, and this is Catalan. Yeah, Catalan. And I mean, by this point, people who are watching this channel. Um, oh, wow. Has that come through or is that? Wow. I think that's come through. That's crazy. Um, I think by this point, people know. Look at that. Hey, you can see the page behind it has bled through those pages. That's crazy. I don't think I've ever seen that. Did a double take and it's just those two pages that doesn't happen on any of the other pages um at this point people who have watched this channel i'm sure know gore vidal very well and know his love for creep packs um so this is exactly what you would expect 
So I excited to dig into that. And then finally, um, another Catalan communications by Bram Stoker and Fernando Fernandez. This is uh, Dracula. Um, and this I'm incredibly excited for. I had a flip through it um, and the art is just outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. Let's see if we can find, uh, well, I mean, we'll just go to any page. I'll try to open it up there. Like, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Yeah, it looks incredible. Oh, sorry. Hitting microphones there. Apologize. Yeah. Um, so that was it. Uh, just those four. Well, just uh, these four big books. Um, so that's some reading. And like I said, I'm, I can't wait to have a look at the lists that uh, he that come out of seeing that rolling rack to see what kind of European albums he has on there. Because I'm sure uh, down the line, whenever he has it done, maybe even in the new year, uh, there will be some more books that have come up to that. Um, as I was going through the Earl Grey video, I kind of checked in on um, Book Depository and... Uh, there wasn't a lot. I mean, the, the problem, and I mean, Dr. Monkey Bot, and I had spoken about it before um, on live streams and things, and probably Earl Grey has, has commented on it as well, too, that one of the unfortunate things is there's a lot of European stuff that just hasn't been translated into English. So there was quite a few titles that he pulled off the shelves there that um, just no luck on. Uh, there was one that caught my attention, though, Druna. Uh, had nothing to do with the voluptuous woman on the front cover, but apparently volume zero of that is, is a silent, is a wordless uh, uh, comic. So he was suggesting that if you want to get a taste of the art in person, that would be a good volume to start with because uh, there's no story to follow. You can, you can still read it no matter which edition you get. Um, so that was kind of exciting to find that out and, and just, you know, book depository as good as it is, it doesn't have everything. So there was stuff that, I could find other places, but unfortunately, I just couldn't find in Book Depository, which is always a bit of a bummer because um, because of the free shipping, right? So that's that's what you're going to get to. Um, and the other thing that popped into my head the other day, which I still haven't looked into, is uh, if they're offering free shipping, uh, who aren't they paying? You know, so there's that worry for me in the back of my head. Um, I'd like to think though that because it was recommended from Adam, and I, as far as I understand it. Uh, Dr. Monkey Bot has the same uh, outlook on Amazon that I do. So I would like to think that maybe he's done a little bit of research um, on Book Depository and, and the thumbs up. But I'm going to do a little bit of digging because uh, it is something that I, I sent to a couple of people for who are asking for Christmas lists. I sent a couple of titles from that website uh, because it's just cheaper for them to pick up books from there. That's it, everybody. Uh, go listen to some music, go read some comics, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Later.